Okay, hello, you're welcome to my channel. Now, in this video, you want to find theta such that cosine of theta is equal to 5. Hmm. Well, from our knowledge of um, cosine of angles, we know that the cosine of an angle, provided that this amplitude is 1, we have cosine of an angle, let's say theta, okay, just as I've written. Now, observing this place, the coefficient there is just 1. If we want to plot the graph of this, this will give us some wavy uh, structure, right? Yeah, starting from, from point zero, okay, we can also talk about the negative axis, but this is one and this is negative one. That is, the highest value this can give you is one, that is towards the positive axis, and then negative one towards the negative axis, depending on the coefficient here. So, how is it possible to get cosine of an angle to give us five? All right. Considering the set of real numbers, for all the angles we can plug in as input, this is actually impossible. So does that mean that our equation has no solution? Anyway, it has no solution. Hmm. And we can end the video, right? But that would be too dummy and too boring. Well, the truth of the fact is that if theta, let me put this down, uh, if theta is a real number, Right? If theta belongs to R, then cosine of theta equals to 5 has no solution. Good. So if you see, if you consider angle theta to be a real number, then cosine of that has no solution. And of course it's true. But what about the complex number? Since the set of complex number has more elements, than the set of real numbers because of the imaginary stuff, okay? Maybe we'll let's investigate the complex numbers to see if we can find an angle theta, which is actually a complex angle, whose cosine will give us five. Good. And to do that, I'm going to recall a definition of cosine using complex numbers, okay? You know, when we talk about the Euler form of a complex number, okay, we can write it as, e to the i theta, which is the same thing as cosine of theta plus i sine theta. And again, we can also get this from the negative of this exponent, e to the negative i theta to be cosine of theta minus i sine theta. These are just known results, right? So by adding these two together, we're going to have two cosine theta. This and this, by adding them together, they'll get to zero, right? And then that tells us that cosine of theta will just be 1 over 2, then e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta. So with this uh, result, that is by adding these two equations together, this gives us an equation for cosine theta, right, in terms of um, the Euler notation or in terms of the complex numbers or in terms of the imaginary number i. Good. So what I would like to do here is that since we are to find theta such so that this is equal to 5, I'm going to equate this cosine theta to 5, and the cosine theta here is this one, so I'll be equating this one to 5, and then when we do that, we'll have 1 over 2, then e to the i theta, um, plus e to the negative i theta, that is just equal to 5, right? Right. Good. Okay, so the next thing I'll do here is just to multiply two on both sides, and let's see what we've got. We're going to have e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta, and then we have that it will be equal to 10. So our interest here at first is to, okay, get theta, and we can do that by introducing log to both sides, but it will be difficult in this case, right, since we are just having a non-standard equation. So what I will do first is to multiply both sides by this term, e to the i theta, thereby converting this to a quadratic equation. So when we multiply both sides by e to the i theta, then this turns to, this time, that will be the square of that, right? This square. Then we multiply this with this one, all right? Since the exponents are just negative of each other, this gives us one as an output, and then we multiply that with 10, we ten have 10 e to the i theta. Great. So I'll rearrange this a little bit, so that we get our constant a, b, and c, and then we can just use the quadratic formula to figure this out. So we're going to have a to the i theta all squared, then minus 10 times 
it to the i theta, we add this with one, and the right hand side now is zero. Because we've subtracted this thing e to the i theta from both sides. Good. So, recalling that the constant a here is one, and b is negative 10, we can solve for e to the i theta, right? You Notice know, in a quadratic form, where this could be replaced with x squared minus 10, x plus one equals zero. All right, so our b here is negative 10, so using the quadratic formula, we have negative b plus or minus the square root of, so negative 100 squared, right? We take care of the negative sign, then minus 4ac, so c here is one and a here is also one, so we just have the minus four divided by two times a, all right? So that just gives us two, great. And now this gives us 96 right inside there, so we have 10 plus or minus the square root of 96 over 2. Now 96 is a non-perfect square, okay? So to actually evaluate this radical term square of 96, we need to rewrite 96 as a product of two numbers, where one of them is a perfect square and the other is a non-perfect square. So what I can think of right now is, um, if we look at 48 and 2, right? Um, okay, let's look at 16 and 6. 16 times 6 will give us this. And 16 is a perfect square, 6 is not. So we can rewrite that as 10 plus or minus the square root of 16 times 6. Then we divide the whole of that by 2. That is e to the i theta. Great. Maybe let's continue over here. So we're going to have, I'm going to take the square root of 16, that will be 4. And then I will divide 10 and that 4 by 2. So we have e to the i theta to be 5. Okay, I'm going to divide it by the 2. So we're going to have it to be 5 plus or minus 2 root 6. Good. I know we can rewrite that root 6 as root 3 times root 2, but we are still going to have radical terms. So I would just like to keep it like this. Great. And now, we've got two values of e to the i theta, but our aim is to find theta. So to actually get theta, we need to take natural log of both sides, right? That will bring the power down at first. So by taking natural log of both sides, we we'll have the natural log of the left-hand side and then the natural log of this right-hand side, right? Good. So by just doing that, we're going to have natural log of the left-hand side gives us i theta equals to the natural log of the right-hand side, 5 plus or minus the square root of, sorry, 2 root 6. Okay, good. All right. So to get it on its own, we need to multiply both sides by negative i. You know, multiplying i with negative i, we're going to have positive 1, which is times theta, just gives us theta. So multiply both sides by uh, negative i, negative i, that gives us 1 here, equals negative i, then that natural logarithm of 5 plus or minus the 2 root 6. Good. So that is the value of theta. There are two of them, so I don't want to separate them. Maybe you can write plus first, and then you write again and use the negative sign. But anyway, recall that cosine is a, is a periodic function with period 2 pi. So if cosine of an angle gives a certain result, then cosine of that angle plus 2 pi will give you that same result from the definition of periodic functions. So since that is the case, I can equally rewrite this angle theta to be, now I'm going to write multiples of 2 pi to show any kind of, uh, for any general, for a general distinct result. So 2n pi minus i times natural log of 5 plus or minus 2 times square root of 6. Square root of 6. Good. Where this n here belongs to the set of integers, right? You can talk of 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. Just whole numbers, positive and negative. But look at this. Theta is 2n pi minus i times natural logarithm of just that. All right. So with this angle, we can have the cosine to be equal to 5. And what? This angle is a complex number. All right. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel.